In this week's Torah portion to Ramah, God said, let them construct a sanctuary for me that I may dwell among them. The word sanctuary here is the Hebrew word mikdash, which is literally the holy place. The mikdash, the sanctuary, is also called the tabernacle in verse 9, which in Hebrew is the word mishkan, which means dwelling place. The tabernacle was a place for God to dwell among his people. The God of Israel, the, the creator God of the universe, is not a distant or uninvolved God. He is a God who wants to be close to his people. In the overall narrative of the Torah, this closeness with his creation was first presented to us in the early chapters of Genesis. God dwelled among Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and humanity was created in order to have a close relationship with God. But as we all know, through sin, Adam and Eve forfeited the ability to commune with God in this way. However, God is a God of grace and mercy, and he is constantly seeking to restore that kind of relationship with us. The tabernacle is a concrete way for God to reestablish this kind of intimate communion with us. In this week's and next week's Torah portion, we learn of all of the different components of the tabernacle, passages that we will explore in greater depth next week. For now, I want to point out that all of the components of the tabernacle were actually earthly materials. The materials were not otherworldly. The tabernacle was made up of actual earthly materials, but it contained God's presence from heaven. The tabernacle was a copy of the tabernacle in heaven. As God said to Moses, you must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. According to the writer of Hebrews, the pattern that God showed Moses was the original heavenly tabernacle. The tabernacle actually greatly informs our view of Christology, that is, our view of Jesus the Messiah, especially with regard to his relationship with God. Many Christians say and believe that Jesus was and is literally God, but this is to misunderstand the metaphors used to describe Jesus. Look at one of the more famous ones. The Apostle John said in John 1.14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the physical representation and manifestation of the Word of God among us. The Word became flesh. In Jesus, the Word dwells. But the Word is not a reference to God himself, but is a reference to God's wonderful and wise plan for salvation. It's God's wonderful expression of himself as it relates to the plan of salvation. And this is similar to God's divine presence dwelling in the tabernacle. God's divine presence was not the totality and essence of God, but it was a wonderful expression of himself. So you could say this, you could say that by his presence, God was dwelling in the tabernacle. And similarly, you can say that by his word, God was dwelling in Jesus. As Paul said, God was in Messiah, reconciling the world to himself. God was in the Messiah, not that God was Messiah or that Messiah was God. And that's a big distinction to make. You see, God dwelled in the tabernacle and he dwelled in Jesus. But just like we shouldn't confuse the tabernacle with God, so too we shouldn't confuse Jesus with God. However, just like the tabernacle was set apart for God, so too was Jesus set apart for God. And just like the tabernacle allowed God's people to draw near to God, so too Jesus allows us to draw near to God. And just like we should revere the tabernacle, so too we should revere Jesus. God wants to be close to us, but because of our sin, he must do so through some kind of medium. And the tabernacle provided an incredible but momentary communion with God. Jesus, however, provides us with permanent and eternal communion with God. And contrary to what most Christians believe, Jesus does not abolish the legitimacy of the tabernacle. But the tabernacle is not the end or the goal in and of itself. The tabernacle points to Jesus the Messiah, the one through whom God dwells and the one through whom he brings near his people.